Hello, and I'd like to congratulate the Neville Bell Lord Lytton in his 14 and a half minute masterclass in how to pull apart inadequate government legislation. That was absolutely brilliant. And I can't see that it leaves much for the rest of us to say. However, I'm going to try. Um, uh, I also am delighted that the Neville Lord, Lord Framlington, Framlingham, actually got in on the last debate, on the last clause, because his was a very valuable contribution uh, with which I largely agree. And I did read the Select Committee report, but something that's come over much more strongly during these debates is just how much they complete, the members of that committee completely swallowed the HST9. It's almost as if they didn't use any sort of judgment and, um, and perhaps didn't listen, as, as was said by others. They didn't listen to anything that uh, reduced HS2 in, in any way. And so um, I think that they perhaps put too much trust in HS2, in the organisation, and perhaps they should listen to the personal testimony of people who have come up against them. For example, the Noble Lord Lord Randall. And, uh, and perhaps, you know, uh, swallow a, a more sceptical pill next time, if there is a next time. Um, I'd also like to um, take issue with the Noble Lord Lord Adonis, who, who did, as the Noble Lady Lady Young suggested, group everybody together in the same box and actually impugn their integrity. And I think that's quite offensive. Now, in my case, it's absolutely right. I did want to stop. Um, the, the original plan, because I thought it, well, not just thought, but um, I read the briefs that actually said what a terrible waste of money it was going to be and how uh, it was going to devastate a lot of the country. But all these things have come to pass. They were all true. And I think what the Neville Lord, Lord Lytton has, has laid out is the fact that the organisation of HS2 did not actually have a very good business case they did not think ahead. They did not assess the, the situation um, as well as they might have done. And so now they are in a mess and, and having to pay compensation or, or whatever to people that, they've, um, that they have not treated very well. Um, but uh, even though I wanted to stop HS2, I still believe that we have to prevent the next stages making the same mistakes. And so um, I would thank the noble Lord, Lord um, Adonis, for not telling you what greens think. I know very well what greens think. We actually have had a policy for the eight years on being against HS2. Personally, I'm a train fan. Um, my husband works on the railway. Uh, we don't have a car. In normal times, we travel every week by train to places. And so uh, I understand extremely well the value of railways. But the whole point about HS2 was that it was designed to cut a few minutes of travelling time for businessmen. And in these days of remote voting, it just isn't appropriate anymore. However, that's a, although it's never too, too late to stop something, I think perhaps we, we have lost that argument. And so um, back to the amendments, um, I, support, I support all of them because obviously, although the impact of HS2 is is massive on the natural world. It also does affect people, individuals, families, communities. And there are businesses that are going to be disrupted possibly for a decade or more. And this has to be taken into account, especially after the, the dreadful impact of the pandemic. And the COVID response does show how the government can put its hand in its pocket. You know, they can, they can track down that magic money tree and they can actually use money to try to make people's lives better. I suggest this is one of those situations where the government has got to do that and make sure that people are not harmed.